stocks as a new trading year does get underway. Is the bull market safe and sound, just taking on a different look? Let's ask Dan Greenhouse, Solus Alternative Asset Management's chief strategist, and Lauren Goodwin, portfolio strategist for New York Life Investments. They are both here at Post 9. Uh, so let me ask you first, Dan, do, do you think the bull market is intact? It's just showing its face a little differently. Now, right now, it's a frown. It's, it's, it's <laughs> the amazing. face has a frown. It's amazing because, what one down day will do. You know, we're giving a little bit back, obviously, as we start with the NASDAQ the weakest. Yeah, I, I don't know that I would read too much into to one day. I think, obviously, you could have on all the guys to talk about the Santa Claus rally extending into the new year. Seasonality is still in your favor. January and February are still terrifically strong months. And the function, uh, the, the change in the calendar as a function of the economy or earnings doesn't really make a difference. Uh, I think the bias is still to the upside right here. There's little reason for now to be bearish. Uh, and again, that's just for the immediate future. Uh, and so I think stocks should keep going going higher. I mean, right now the Dow's down by, you know, 300, uh, or no, I'm sorry, the Nasdaq's down 300. Uh, just, that number just pops out at you because it's leads to the conversation that's really dominated towards the end of the year as we begin now this, this new week, whether this change of makeup of the market is taking shape. I hate being on with Dan because we tend to agree on so much and that doesn't make for great TV. You're not the but... only one who hates being on with me, so. <laughs> um, no, I think that the Magnific <laughs> Magnificent Seven have moved higher over the course of 2023 for reasons that don't have a lot to do with a lot of the market narratives that are floating around today around rates and the Fed, et cetera. I agree that uh, this is probably just a little bit of beginning of year consolidation, the market sort of taking stock of, of, of what we've seen over the past year, what to expect ahead. And this rally probably does still have legs at least for a few more weeks. I don't see strong, compelling reasons why we'd see a reversal in the rally. Yeah, I mean, are you, are you overall more positive on the market than you were for a, a lot of 2023? I'm fairly constructive on the market on a very tactical basis, but our economic view hasn't changed a whole lot in the sense that some of the, the, the boons, the reason for um, upside surprises over the course of 2023, largely liquidity based. And those are very difficult to anticipate in advance. And I expect that the, the Fed tightening cycle that we saw over the course of the year is still likely to bite here in the next few months. But it really, I mean, it's more than that. How, how is it just that? We, we wouldn't be where we are, and certainly we wouldn't have had the broadening out as we ended 2023 without the idea that the economy is going to remain pretty decent. And we may have that soft landing that we've talked about, that talk of recession seems to be in the past for many. That's true, but I think that there's the, the shift in narrative towards a real consensus around soft landing has a lot more to do with the terms people are using than the forecast that they're putting out. Most analysts and economists still expect economic growth to slow. And really the argument we're having is, does it slow slowly or quickly? And are we just below or just above zero percent? And so I don't actually see that as a, as a strongly compelling reason for the market to move higher and higher and higher from, from here for much longer because the earnings outlook is still deteriorating even in a soft landing circumstance.